Hearing this bewildered us, learning that there was even a possibility that there was a master plan for the unveiling of these events was staggering. Receiving this information made us inherently suspicious that this ascended master brotherhood of the all, called in many books the great white brotherhood, white in this context meaning white light, has been in charge all along. These masters appear to be members of a group that oversees the entire plan of operations, at least for this section of the universe. Emphatically, they state that they work for God. They are here to assure that all details of the plan run on schedule. Throughout history, when the time was right, they have communicated with souls such as ourselves. They cite Noah's being notified of the upcoming flood or John the Baptist foretelling the coming of Jesus as examples. These historical figures received their messages in the same way that many are receiving this kind of information today. Only the masters appear to have access to the entire master plan. We receive pieces that fit our missions. They oversee the tactics and maneuvers and monitor the proceedings. We are rewarded for our progress and accomplishments with more assignments and hard work. We also are rewarded by knowing that God's plan is actually developing as planned and that each of us in our own small way is contributing to its success. Katumi explained that transformation takes quantum leaps around the turn of each millennia. It's noticeable when each new age begins. The vibrational frequencies automatically change with the procession of the planets and stars and in this scientific motion, consciousness also adjusts. They define consciousness as the foundation for all there is, for they say that God is thought, and out of thought came light, from which all things are manifested. They say that the world is a microcosm of the universe, which is our macrocosm. They say that all is energy, and that energy is light, out of light energy came, sound energy, in the original creation. Out of light and sound comes the formation of all that is. Each object, whether solid, liquid, or gas, has its own code, which is a vibratory frequency. This vibration is created out of light. Since humans contain a consciousness that can be controlled, and since consciousness is thought, then each individual is actually a co-creator with the divine. This is the lesson we have journeyed to earth to discover. This is the reason for life and for our incarnation in this lifetime. Few will find the answers to these mysteries, for an individual has to experience enlightenment to be able to grasp this truth. Most will scorn this principle, for to accept it demands accountability for our actions. Not many are ready to accept this kind of responsibility. Most, in fact, will try to provide explanations contrary to these facts. Therefore, few are ready for the transformation that is destined to consume the earth over the next several years. The date for entry into the fifth dimension is scheduled for the year 2012, says Katumi. He emphatically states that all vibrational conditions will be in place for this transformation to occur by the year 2011. This he called the end of the world. This he also says must be the turning point for all of the cleansing to be complete, for it will be at this moment when the critical mass should be ready to take that leap of consciousness into the fifth dimension of time-space. This phenomena will consume all that has existed before. Some will not recognize their abilities as they are today, but will actually take on a higher form of what is closer to what our Arcturian friends described in the book, We the Arcturians. Some are destined to become the Adam Cadman species, a highly evolved group of beings with abilities not presently understood on Earth. The world will be in the at one with the Creator. The planet will understand the harmony and peace for which it has yearned for many centuries. The decade of the 90s and the beginning of the millennium will test many who are in doubt today. 
and provide each with the exact tests that they will need to overcome their fears and doubts regarding this transition. Since the human form is destined to change precisely how we are not clear, then new rules, books if you will, must be written that will contain the information to help each soul evolve to this new state of consciousness. The information provided in this document, we were told, would contribute to this evolutionary leap for humanity. Much will be transmitted over the next two decades, but only the souls who are ready to receive the new curriculum will elect to raise their vibrations to match those required to enter the new age. The word vibration is the key. All humans who will journey on to this new world in the fifth dimension of time-space must have a vibrational frequency earned through raised consciousness that will match the vibrational frequency of the new age. This phenomena is absolute and will be measured by individuals' abilities to be open-minded, loving, centered, tranquil, peaceful, and devoted. Since these characteristics are more closely aligned with the higher states of consciousness, these individuals are defined by the masters as being more godlike. These individuals will command the vibrational frequency closer to the speed of light, which will be in alignment with the age of Aquarius. Katumi describes this whole phenomena as a scientific one. He stated that our physicists were already beginning to make connections among these principles and concepts and soon would be able to document the concept of oneness, which is a part of the millennium which we are entering. Since we are entering the home, or perhaps dimension is a better word, of higher level beings, they are our teachers. Soon, they have said, we will have an entirely new curriculum that we must master. They proposed the outline for this book as a part of that curriculum and said that those souls who journey into the higher realms will have to understand and master it. This curriculum includes the universal laws. In the etheric, one behaves at one with the all. In order to do so, the soul must follow certain rules. These rules are the universal laws. The laws, Katumi said, were provided to earth by many known as ancient masters, one of whom was Hermes Trigmagistus, the ancient of the ancients. It was the Egyptians, he said, who later understood these laws and used the power that this existence of at one provided to them. That is why they built such a great civilization. When one is in harmony with the universal laws, then all things can be created and manifested, for the beings who incarnate are truly co-creators with the all. In this state of balance and perfection come the application of ancient mystery school teachings and the keys to eternal salvation. The key to understanding a higher consciousness is actually to strive to be one with it. When the rule rules and the laws are followed with mastery and discipline, then all else follows in harmony. In order to become one with one's own divinity, however, one must have the mental discipline and intellect to understand it. Central to understanding and employing knowledge about the universal laws is the understanding of how the human mind works, for the mind holds the keys to transformation. Since scientists are only now beginning to map the paths of intelligence, memory, and consciousness, we ask Katumi to explain his viewpoints on the nature of intellect to us so that we would be better equipped to understand the information that was about to be transmitted for this book. He responded in a way that at first appeared to evade the question, then proved in the end to be very powerful. As usual, he did not provide us with the textbook explanation that we wanted. His explanation provoked us to think and employed abstract concepts, analogies, and truths that were greater than what we were accustomed to hearing. After reading the entire transmission, we felt humbled for having doubted his ability to provide the answer. His answer challenges one to see through different eyes, eyes that see us as beings greater than what we believe 
ourselves to be.